I'm Sam, and I'm joined by my colleagues Ed, Chico, Ray, and Bill on the end there. And we have a really special guest with us for this segment. Uh, Miyamoto-san has joined us to talk to us a little bit about The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Now, earlier on today, uh, Anuma-san stopped by and was talking to us about the different ways that this game kind of steps away from what people might think about as the traditional Zelda conventions. But what we'd love to talk about with you, Miyamoto-san, is how we're actually getting back to the roots of the original Legend of Zelda game here. あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あ
you can actually see the same mountain, those same Twin Peaks. Uh, we have them right on screen here now uh, in that original illustration uh, here in the world of Breath of the Wild. It's really interesting how that captures the, the sense of excitement, not only looking over this cliff, but also when you're on the edge of the plateau and you're just kind of looking at all this space that you really want to get to and explore. And of course, as Miyamoto-san said, the, the NES game starts with an old man who gives you a sword. You, you start off in a field and you walk into a cave to get the sword. In this game, you start in a cave and you walk out into a field. So it's almost like it's reversed. <laughs> Mimorosan, uh, you mentioned the fact that it was a very conscious choice to not give the player a lot in the way of instruction or tutorial at the beginning of the original Legend of Zelda. Uh, was it a similar reason that you didn't give a lot of story information at the beginning and you kind of dropped the player into this world without telling them anything about what's going on around them?どうしてもあなたは何で、で、どんなところに置かれててっていうことをプレイヤーが理解するために最近のゼルダっていうのはこう、いろんなこう人が出てきて説明してたんですね。で、これは本当に原点に帰って自分が何かわかんない状態から始
本当に自然に見えるかどうかという監修とかそういうところに徹してて、まあ、あとお金の<笑>出会いとかあの本当に現場がどんどん今一緒に作ってきた青沼さんとか藤林さんとかディレクターたちとそれからあプログラマーとかデザイナーがみんなでこれを作ってくれてる。So, you know, I think my position will end up being executive producer on this title as well. But、um, I have been in the past. But in past Zelda titles, I took on a lot of different roles as well. You know,、um, even though I was the executive producer, I did a lot of things that maybe a director would have. But this time around, I, my involvement is really focused on just making sure that Link's movement is natural and his interaction with the environment,、uh, in, with nature, is natural and that、uh, it's, it's all a smooth experience. And really, all the details,、um, I've left it really up to、uh, Mr. Aonuma the, and、um, Mr. Fujibayashi. And、uh, of course, all the designers and programmers. You know, this is a really、uh, collaborative effort on everyone's behalf. And then I also、um, look after the financials, too. <laughs> <laughs> I was really curious,、um, you mentioned when Chico was fighting the problem with the axe there, that your approach would have been probably to shoot from a distance.、Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about how your approach has been as you play this game? <laughs> Before, before you jump into that, I just、Ooh. have to point out how much this reminds me of the original meat item <laughs> in the original <laughs> NES Zelda game. It's gotten so big. <laughs> 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 一人の,あの敵ともどの武器を使ってもいいし敵の武器を奪って使ってもいいし本当に自分の武器が壊れてそうせざるを得ない時もあるぐらいあのいろんな戦い方があります。You know,、uh, before this、uh, stream started, we were kind of joking around. You can, you can probably take on、uh, Ganon with just, just as he is in the noon, and you really can do that. That's how much freedom this game offers. So you can use all different kinds of weapons for all different kinds of enemies. You can take their weapons and use them against them. So it really does open up to any kind of gameplay style that you prefer. It also opens up a lot of different possibilities in terms of how you want to approach things like combat or puzzle solving. Um, you know, in, in certainly the more recent 3D Zelda games, generally when you found yourself faced with a puzzle, there's one solution. Whereas in this game,、uh, even as we've been playing in the treehouse, we've found that different people have very different approaches in terms of how they want to try to solve puzzles.、Um, and I think、uh, Chico is, is taking a slightly different approach here to、uh, how she wants to deal with、uh, some combat. <laughs> like you see here, the wind is going towards the、uh, enemy, so you just use the fire to take it、uh, back to where the enemy is. Great to talk about how the fire played an interesting role in the original Legend of Zelda as well. That's right. This is,、uh, I think, the first time in a while that Link is able to use really fire as a, a weapon in a lot of different ways. In the, the original NES Zelda game, you could burn bushes and find things there. And I'm sure a lot, of, a lot of all of you probably spent a lot of time <laughs> burning every bush in the game. Everyone, everyone. <laughs> Especially Bill. <laughs> Bill loves burning things. <laughs> <laughs> He loves bombs too. <laughs> That's right. So I think、uh, maybe what we're going to do here is、uh, switch to a slightly、uh, different save data. And、um, we're going to look at a slightly different area of the plateau here. So I'm curious,、um, Miyamoto san, as we're moving on to another section of the game,、uh, it must be a really interesting experience having been involved in a series for, for this long and over this many iterations.、Um, have you found that there are things that you wished you could have had in the original Legend of Zelda game that you've been able to realize over the course of the series? I'm not sure if you've been able to realize the first time 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 you've been able to realize the first time. いやしあの現場のメンバー、プログラマー、特にプログラマーとデザイナーたちがこう自然をそのまま自然として作り直そうということにすごいチャレンジをしていて、僕は、まあ、あのこのネタがこうなるというより、それ全体が理想的だなと思ってただけなんですけど、だからこの部分のアイデアをこうして作ってくれと言ったことはなくて、現場がどんどんものを作っていくっていう。You know, the programmers and the designers, instead of kind of trying to make、uh, one, sort, one spec or one、uh, feature available, they try to really recreate nature as is within the game. And within that step, there's a lot of、um, things that came up. 
And so there wasn't anything that I uh, specifically requested. It all came uh, from the development, uh, or excuse me, the uh, programmers and the designers. それ so now as we're trying to create this massive world, we notice that um, as we're, uh, during that step, we realize a lot of those small, minute details are being polished as well. Mm -hmm. So when you're playing the game, you, you know, there's all these details and uh, things that you just kind of notice and uh, stumble upon. For example, like, uh, you know, when you look at uh, pieces of rock or stone, some of them, you kind of know that you can't move, and some of them look suspiciously, suspiciously uh, movable, and you just kind of have this feeling. I just don't have anything. Yeah, me for. Oh, wait. There's one. Well. <laughs> I mean, it definitely is such a, a rich, Maybe not. Just immersive experience. Not it feels weird. so good. Bill, Bill bringing up the, the chunk of meat looking like the, the end, one from the NES reminded me of, you know, that was one of my first great video game moments as a kid was going into that cave scene, Grumble Grumble, and being like, oh, okay, here's a puzzle. This is something to figure out. And then remembering, because I had had the manual memorized at that point, because that was all the literature we had back then, um, I was like, oh, I bet you he's hungry. Oh, that's, there's meat there. And it's just like, da -da -da -da. like my, my first little light bulb going off. I, was, I still remember that moment very clearly. <laughs> Yeah, and this was an example here again of, you know, in the, the original NES Zelda game, sometimes there were there were those conspicuous spots where you, you knew you could place a bomb. In that game, sometimes you had to tap the wall to see if the, the sound was different. Um, but uh, here in, in Breath of the Wild, um, it's really interesting because they've done such a very good job, as Miyamoto was pointing out, of how the, the, the walls are designed in a way that they give you a little bit of a hint that maybe you can blow it up, but there have also been plenty of times where I've had to experiment and see if it, if it actually can happen. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of a feet gut feeling you have when you look at it. So I'm curious, I mean, Motosan, have you been surprised as you watch members of the dev team play this game, seeing the different approaches they take, or maybe them playing the game in ways that other members of the team didn't really expect? あの、遊ぶとか、それからすごく上手になると you know, so I actually haven't beat the game, so there's a lot that I'm still discovering as well. But, you know, you I'm just looking at some of the development team play this, you know, how they use different types of uh, vehicles and uh, what weapons to use when they're riding those vehicles. And then also, like the like the horse, basically. And also, um, you know, when I, there's, if you're really good at playing, like you saw earlier, you can uh, go into the slow motion effect. So seeing that kind of uh, high-level gameplay is really, uh, I learned a lot from it. から so, you know, even with climbing, you got to keep an eye out for the stamina gauge so you, uh, you make sure that you have places to rest when you are uh, going up. And, or maybe you could just go um, all the way around and go from the back. And likewise, in, uh, when you're maybe attacking the enemy camp, you don't need to go from the entrance. You can go back around and uh, attack from the, from the, from the back side. Mm -hmm. So really, there's a lot that, um, and as more and more features get unlocked, there's a lot of more ways to play the game and um, uh, you know, solve these puzzles. Mm -hmm. Now, Miyamoto-san, one of the, the inspirations that you had for The Legend of Zelda came from your early days in the Boy Scouts. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? Uh, hi. 
今聞こえました<笑><笑>そうですねあの昔ねゼルダを最初のゼルダを作ってる時に、えー、と子供の頃のボーイスカウントでねあのいろんなハイキングをしたりそれからオリエンテーリングをしたりでそれで山の上に登ってその山の上にすごい湖が伸びすごい感動したことを思い出したんですねだからその頃の思い出でゼルダを作ったりゼルダを遊んでて思い出したっていうでそのシーンが今度はもうさらに拡大されて、えー、っと山に実際自分が行ってあるところから、えー、あそこまでにしましょう<笑><笑> So you know when I was a child I was in the Boy Scout and I used to go, do、um, hiking and orienteering and there was a time when I was climbing the mountain and it opened cleared up into this beautiful lake and when I saw、uh, a scene similar to that original Zelda it brought me back to that and now looking at this Zelda it's, 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 it's even more grander than it was before だからあのルートを攻略しながらこう山の上まで行ってでこっちへ行く目的地があるんですけどちょっとこっちにも興味があって行った時にいつ戻ればいいのかってだんだん自分で不安になってくるっていうけど意外とそれがね短時間の間にいろんなシミュレーションができるのがこの第一の魅力だと思います。You know, and、uh, when you're mountain,、uh, climbing a mountain, you have a destination, but then something strikes your interest, so you kind of go off the,、uh, the path.、Mm. And then, you know, there's a lot of interesting things out there, but then you, st- I know, you start to wonder wait, when am I supposed to go back? Am I going to be able to go back? But then that kind of feeling is, is recreated here. And what's great about this game is that、uh, within a、uh, short period of time, you're able to really、um, explore a lot, and there's a lot to explore in this. And that's one of the things that I love about the game is that just like the original NES Zelda game, it's, it's very easy to kind of wander off your path or get lost in the world and find yourself in an area where the enemies are way beyond your skill level.、Right. <laughs> and then you've got to decide if you want to try to fight it out or if you want to、uh, try to turn around and run back. So, I'm going to go to the next one. So, I'm going to go to the next one. うちわで青いで<笑>そう<笑>このコロブのうちわで船を進めてますけどね<笑> so, uh, goes, uh, fan, uh, the... あのこういう今度進む自分で進める引っかかってる引っかかってますね自分で進めるイカだっていうのはねこれ今物理と計算で引っかかってしまってるんですけどもあの8ビットの頃からこうイカだに乗ったらスッと進むとかうちわで青むとかいうネタはいろいろあるんですけども今回そういう漫画のようなこと、嘘のようなこと、漫画のようなことを全部本物の物理でやると、すごい新しい魅力があるんですね。こんなこと起こるわけないんですけど、嘘のような本当をやる。You know, like when Chico is stuck there, it's it's because of the physics engine of this game.、Mm. But then, you know, obviously you can't actually、uh, swing a fan and propel yourself on a raft. And these are all kind of、um, comic book like effects. But taking that and putting,、uh, applying that into a、um, physics engine creates this whole new experience. It's very fun to watch. Of course, in the original NES Zelda game, Link somehow had a raft that he carried around with him.、Um, but in this case, you'll have to find the raft in the lake and ride it across. <laughs> so, this man. You know, you might find the raft and you realize, oh no, I don't have a fan, so you gotta go back and go grab it. I'm lucky to be working on this game, just given the members of the development team, and maybe a budding interest in hiking and maybe joining you on a trip. I think they could dip team field trips up. It would be amazing once everybody's had a chance to play this game. Some team building. Team building. Maybe hide copies of the game and they have to go hunt them out on the mountain. <laughs> ちょっと。
This is actually one of the other things that I love about the game is that, you know, certainly in the, the original 8-bit Zelda game, the team did an amazing job of using the limited color palettes mm -hmm. and the, the limited graphics of the time to depict a very fully realized world with a lot of different terrain. And, and we see that again here in Breath of the Wild, but to, to an exponential degree. Mm -hmm. And you see it just in the, the style of trees that we've seen so far uh, with the, the forest down below to the fir trees up here in the mountains. It's really impressive. So if you go to the forest, it really does look like a forest. You can uh, get things like uh, mushrooms from the forest. It goes without saying, but it, it really is. This game is so beautiful. It, it looks so good. Yeah. Yeah. I wish I might use the current, so I can't go. Yeah. So. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, you notice, since we were talking about the fact that you've been really involved in uh, making sure that all the animations and the movement feels really good, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about the temperature system and your thoughts on that, because that's really interesting as far as how it affects Link as he's traveling through the world. あの、山の上の方に行くと気温が低くなりますよね。そうすると、ちょっと暖かくなれるものを食べたらとか。で、今度のゲームはあの、服も、服もね、ものすごい種類の服があるんですけども、それが暑いところと寒いところにのために準備
Nice moves, Chico. Right. Well, thank you, Andy and Bonasan, so much for joining us and sharing some stories about the development of the original game and how this is kind of bringing us back around to the roots of the Zelda series. It's really cool to see how the, the two have been connecting. Um, and I uh, hope you enjoy uh, maybe taking a walk through the booth if you haven't already known about it up and coming. It's mm -hmm. very cool. Those are guys that must have school. Because I must have. Jordan, this. This is very good, Chico. And uh, everybody else, thanks for joining us. Uh, folks who are watching, please don't go anywhere. In a few minutes, we're going to come back and take you into another of the shrines that you can check out on the plateau. So, Please stay tuned. Stick around.